Hola, muy buenos días. Gracias, gracias. <laughs> Good morning, continuous liners. I just got my beautiful latte delivered to me. Look at that. We got a little bear and we got a little ajolote. Ajolote, muy buenos días. Ajolo de ajolotes de oso, oso negro. Y riquísimo latte. God, that's so good. <laughs> that's riquísimo. <laughs> Gracias. Alrighty, so uh, here, Monday morning. Oh my God, I'm a little high because my workshop ended last night. My Sketch Mexico City workshop ended last night with, uh, not a bang, with a thunder because actually the rains have started here in Mexico City and what a delight. What an absolute delight. You know, most of Mexico is enduring and suffering from uh, a drought, right? And so I know having lived here last season, the rains were pretty light here in Mexico City. And for the first few days of the workshop, it was totally hot. It was super hot. Like, San, not San Miguel hot, but it was pretty warm, right? Like, people were exposing a lot of skin, which you don't really see in Mexico City. But now it's back to jackets and scarves, which I am here for that. Covered up. I love a little scarf around my neck. My scarf is actually holding my phone in place so it doesn't get stolen. <laughs> like a scarf's gonna... Well, you never know. Anyways, good Monday morning to you here from Condesa and La Ciudad de Mexico. I've got my continuous line warm-up book with me. This is the one I just used in my workshop. And when you come on an Art Leap Adventures Sketch with Megan workshop, you get your very own, um, you get your very own drawing warm-up book, right? With my beautiful logo. And I don't even put my name nor my picture on it, right? <laughs> and you get a beautifully colored big pen. Here's pink to match my ajalote, which also matches my ajalote sunglasses, right? You see, they're ajalote colored. <laughs> yeah, so really, what a great time we had this week drawn around Mexico City. Here, I'm going to just show, first of all, I'm going to have a sip of my coffee because this coffee is freaking amazing. So in all my workshops, the first thing we do is we throw color on a beautiful piece of watercolor paper and then we make, we fold them into personalized, personal sketchbooks, right? That don't require stitching or anything. What's that? Oh, that's my, from my sketchbook. So we, the first thing we do is we make these sketchbooks <laughs> and then we fold them into super cool transportable sketchbooks and that um, everyone gets their own and colors it. Like here's the skyline of the Centro Historico from our restaurant, our lunch restaurant. Here's the fountain out in front of our hotel. Here's one of Diego's uh, pre-Hispanic creatures surrounded by Tacos El Pastor. <laughs> and then as things go on, it gets a little bit, not more aggressive, but we always, people start to take more risks, myself included, right? So like, for example, when the rain showed up here, um, I had a really beautiful centurion cactus, right? There's the base and there's the flowers. But then Tlaloc showed up and I, I started drawing the Aztec god of rain because that is the Aztec god of rain. And he's muy importante, right? Here's another one of Diego's creatures surrounded by continuous line coffee cups, right? So here is my personal sketchbook that I love to make. Oh, here's a whole series of icons from Mexico City. This is kind of funny. Let me show you this. Mexico City icons. One of Diego's guys, Megan Burns. Uh, the guy from, uh, he's from the Anthropology Museum. There's David from Roma Norte. There's my upside down wine, glass of wine. And there's uh, the Countess from Condesa, right? So Megan Burns is in there with the icons of Mexico City. 
<laughs> I'm sure you all would agree that Megan Burns is an icon of Mexico City. <laughs> and more to come. So yeah, these fold up very cool. And then so here's my whole guy with an ice cream vendor, right? And there's the death guy from <laughs> the death guy. You know, he's the death guy from Tenochtitlan, right? So then this folds up very nicely and it's a cool travel sketchbook. Everyone makes one. Everyone is different. Everyone is super cool. And honestly, as people do it, like they start out like, like everyone, right? you start out like, well, I'm just going to draw a little picture over here in the corner. I'm going to stay in the box and just keep it nice and tidy. And then by the end of the workshop, everyone's like, wah, 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 which is super cool. <laughs> super cool. Yeah. So I'm loving my workshops. I'm loving how they are evolving. I'm loving my curriculum. I'm loving the uh, experiences. <laughs> And I owe it all, well, I owe it to my hard work, so I'd like to take a moment to thank myself. <laughs> and, um, but I owe it also to Continuous Line, right? Which I'm going to jump right into with my hot pink big pen and start doing my Continuous Line warm-ups. Because, honestly, no great things are built or created with out hard work behind the scenes right so uh you know in this day of social media where things look like maybe people have not instant success but kind of early success there's usually a whole lot of work that goes on behind it right and i've been working hard on my workshops i'm this is not to like toot my own horn it's just to uh, comment on the process right like i do i work very hard on my workshops to create experiences because it, they're immersive, right? It's not just like, come draw with me and then go figure out what to do with the rest of your time. Which, you know, some people like that. But when people are coming to Mexico City, I love, or wherever we're at in Mexico, I like to, sh you know, we go to great restaurants, we try great food, we go to cultural things with the art. I like to hire local guides who can teach me and my group about things. Um, you know, it's not just like, come draw with me. It's a whole immersive thing i mean we draw a lot there's a lot of drawing but um there's also a lot of like trying to take in and understand the local culture right and mexico city is one of these places that is highly misunderstood i mean most of the people who are doing my types of workshops everyone's all about oh i gotta go to europe I gotta go to europe because that's what we do we go to europe and you know your europe, europe is cool i, I want to go to europe too um but don't overlook the powerful, powerful learning opportunities in Mexico. Uh, you know, the whole world is kind of going through a reckoning, right? So Mexico is no um, exception to that, nor is Europe, nor is the United States, nor is anywhere, right? There's a lot of turmoil in the world, right? But, um, you know, so what do we do? Do we stay at home, sit at the edge of the bed and cry? Or do we pick and choose things that like our best suited for our own individual goals right and me personally uh, for whatever time I have left in this world I want to have educational uh, artistic adventures right where I want to hello doggy can you see the dogs coming up the avenue here because <laughs> there's so many dogs uh, let me have a sip of my coffee this coffee is just so delicious Mm, mm, mm. Honestly, I think this is one of the better. I mean, there's a lot of really good coffee in Mexico, but sometimes it's really strong, too. This is nicely strong and nicely delicious. Mm, mm, mm. I'm going to keep that close by so I don't have to. Here, wait, let me move this down a little bit so, oop, so that you know that I'm drawing and I'm not just lying about it, right? So, um, yeah, I create, you know, like the gals that are on this workshop, they said, oh my God, how do you come up with all this? You know, because it's, it's a full agenda of like cultural outings and eating and um, drawing out on location and cool locations where everyone feels safe and entertained, right? And, um, you know, it's really, I just design the type of sketch workshop that I would want to go on because... At this juncture of my life, 
that's how I want to spend my time um, traveling and drawing and learning about local cultures right so with that with knowing that's what I want to do that's what I create for others right I create opportunities like that let me fix these glasses they're a little um, they're sliding down my nose right <laughs> There, there's a little better. My ajalote glasses have been secured, and I've got my ajalote keeping an eye on things. So we're all, um, we're all, and I've got my pink ajalote pen. Ajalotes are huge right now here in Mexico. Huge. They're big in Me uh, Oaxaca, and they're big in Mexico City because they're trying to save them. They almost went extinct, and they're a highly uh, sought-after creature because of their regenerative person, um, regenerative. Um, Their regenerative abilities uh, for science, right? So I think I would imagine science probably over um, over harvested. Um, but now, because they are a vital part of the Mexico City waterways, which we explored the other day down in Xochimilco, we went down to a Chinampa a farm down there in, in Mexico City, Xochimilco area, which you can only access by a boat. And a, most of these boats in, um, in the Xochimilco area, most people think it's just a party thing because really that's what the tourism focuses on in that area. Come on the boat and get drunk and listen to music and dance and sing and eat and get drunk, right? That's what, Xochim that's what Xochimilco is known for, and it's a big tourist uh, attraction. Well, there's a whole other side to uh, Xochimilco, and that is the farms. A lot of these farms are support, not, well, I don't want to say supporting Mexico City because that's a complicated thing. Mexico City is like a huge black hole. Um, but, it, uh, you know, it is organic farming. We learned about the mud. We learned about how they farm, how they grow. They're beautiful. They can't be certified organic because it's, a, it's farming in mud, right? So it's got a whole different deal. It's a whole different deal. And working in an organic farm myself, I understand it's super complicated to get the official... Uh, organic certification which is oftentimes uh, a shame for a lot of farmers who are working hard to provide a clean product which is the way it should be as opposed to all these industrial farms uh, mass producing chemical laden food which is the norm now right that's why you got so many people sick and fat and tired and and voting for people like Trump because of how the food is <laughs> produced and the media and the whole deal. It's all very complicated, right? Anywho, don't let get me off on that subject. But, so, we did. We spent a day out on <clears throat> Xochimilco on the boat. Went to an organic farm, had a beautiful farm breakfast, and learned about how they grow their vegetables. And uh, we did some drawing on the, bu on the bus, on the boat. And, yeah, it was a beautiful thing, right? I... Um, you know, worked with a group, a nonprofit group that is focused on the conservation and preservation of organic farming in Xochimilco, right? So this was not like a party boat experience. We were down there um, learning about how they're, you know, about the water situation, which is not good in Mexico, right? And when you think about it, Mexico, Mexico City it used to be an enormous lake. It used to be all water, and now there's no water. Huh, I wonder, I wonder who... How that happened? What went wrong there? Well, it's probably a human thing, right? We've got, anyways. Don't get me off on that now either. <laughs> I mean, I use water too. I'm using. I'm not trying to be like, oh, I'm so perfect and saintly. I'm not at all. But I do try to learn about what what we can do, what has happened, and what we can do. No small task indeed. No small task indeed. Right. So. On the boats, learning about the water situation and the organic farming for Mexico City. Um, and uh, we had a day in the Centro Histórico to learn about the Aztec pyramids. And, you know, it's a huge history, but we got about an hour's worth of it. And then a day at the Anthropology Museum with another guide, same guide, beautiful guide. I, I found this beautiful, she's like a print, like this fairy. She's like... She speaks with her hands, and she was just so magical. The, way, the information and the history that she shared with us about Mexico City and the Aztecs and Tenochtitlan. And honestly, it was really beautiful. The whole thing was really this beautiful trilogy. Speaking of trilogy, 
I found a trilogy necklace here in Mexico City. I was looking for one in Ireland when I was there, and I could. I found the very conservative Catholic-looking ones, and I didn't want to wear the one that all the Catholics are wearing because, my God, are you kidding me? So I found the trilogy necklace here, charm here in Mexico City, and in my workshop was kind of a trilogy, right? Centro Histórico Xochimilco Anthropology Museum. So it was a beautiful trilogy, honestly. It really was. And uh, I'm really just so delighted with how the workshop went, and I believe uh, everyone had a good time. So yeah, now I've got another day here in Mexico City. I'm going to do some planning for some future events and uh, I've got a few meetings. Uh, the rest of the gang is uh, shoving off this morning, so I'll say sayonara. And uh, yeah, I'm totally grateful to be able to do this work and have people that are excited by it. Because, you know, for a long time I had people telling me I wasn't, well, and still I'm sure that'll happen, that I'm not qualified to teach and, you know, I'm not really... Anyways, I'm not going to get into what other people have said, but, you know, rejection is a part of life. So I'm not like, oh, woe is me. I'm the only one who's ever been rejected. No, of course, we've all been rejected, right? And I have been told that my workshops are not, you know, of a good enough caliber. <laughs> and I say to that, I beg your pardon. Because <laughs> honestly, I think I have an amazing workshop for... Uh, curious adventure seeking artists who want to know more about the world with whatever time we have left right and so with that in mind i'm going to finish big with a heart and um to go easy on myself and go easy on others right because you know i just mentioned being rejected we all get rejected right so like even though i'm, I'm getting lots of compliments about what a great workshop this was it was so great so great Honestly, in the back of my mind, I still hear the things that, you know, like the why, you know, like I, the times and places I was told I wasn't good enough, right? I mean, come on. This is like human, it's human nature, right? To focus on the negative. But so that's why I remind myself literally with hearts to go easy on myself because, yes, while I may have been rejected and some people didn't understand the scope of the work that I'm trying to create, and I think it's honestly a super magical scope. I mean, I'm no bones about it. All my, all my hopes and dreams of the workshops I wanted to create where it's not just drawing, it's not just like, I mean, I'm never going to be like, oh, get out there and do your urban sketching because urban sketching is not really a... It's not, there's not a lot of love in urban sketching. Oh, yeah, don't tell anyone I said that, right? But in just, in, I mean, there's lovely people, don't get me wrong, but it's sort of that manifesto thing of, like, just get out there and be a sketch warrior. Well, that's cool, you can do that, but why not have some fun and why not learn about the culture and why not just, like, go easy on yourself about the whole, hello, <laughs> about your whole artistic evolution because, generally speaking, almost every person I know has, like, a wounded art story and maybe it didn't wound them from having a good life but it may have wounded them from stopping creating art right and so ideally at some point hopefully maybe if we're lucky enough to live long enough and um, you know to have gotten through some challenges in life hopefully and ideally you get to a place where you can start making art for yourself and if that is what your goal is right like I didn't do art for a long time because, like many of us, I was just trying to, like, stay alive and find a, a carve out a life, right, and pay the bills and all that. And, you know, that's still a part of my deal. But I also, um, you know, it was really when my mother died, I said, okay, this is it. This is when I start designing the life that I want and that works for me and that I'm excited about, right? So I want to be of service. I want to be of service. And the only way I can really be of service is if I'm grounded and inspired and motivated right and so what grounds me drawing what inspires me drawing and what motivates me drawing right so these are the things I'm doing and so by doing them and taking care of the whole sovereign deal keeping it sovereign keeping it focused on as it's a channel for my drawing is a channel for self-help it helps me to feel better it's not being selfish it's not being like well then believe me i've been through all that thing i'm like oh you're so selfish you're drawing art when you know the whole world is falling apart and how how 
how what a luxury it is that you're able to draw when the whole world is suffering yeah I know I get that I've been through all that I have been through all those messages and I've had to work through them because I feel I can be of service when I feel good about who I am when I feel grounded and I feel like I'm doing the things I'm doing which for me right now is drawing and creating opportunities for people to come with me and draw and do cool things before we can't right because nothing is uh, forever right I'm not being doomy and gloomy but seriously nothing is forever so do the thing that's important to you go if you want to be an artist go be an artist if you want to go be an architect go get, get a ruler and draw straight lines <laughs> I'm never gonna use a ruler mm -mm -mm. alrighty everyone so here as speaking of trilogies trilogy oh wait trilogy here's my trilogy because this is just what my workshop was right like it was a trilogy of art culture and community art culture and community here in Mexico City we are in the Centro Historico Xochimilco and the Anthropology Museum beautiful trilogy that fits together right so what is the trilogy that keeps you afloat that keeps you motivated and keeps you inspired uh, ideally if you're here in this community it probably has something to do with drawing right so keep on drawing keep on telling your stories keep on practicing your lines because honestly very through these elementary practices your lines will get stronger I just had uh, eight women here with me who absolutely saw it believed it felt it knew it owned it embraced it you know poco a poco right because like oftentimes I what I notice is like when women are starting to when people are starting to draw they they're doubting themselves and they're doubting their ability their they're privileged to even spend time doing it right so there's all these like messages of like oh god I'm not good at this why am I doing this I should be doing something more useful that's what I hear see here from a lot of women right and so push through that stick with it break through it right because it's it's worth it right even if it's just a part-time hobby for me I'm crazy and um, just went all in I went all in with my drawing because I knew this was the thing I wanted to do and so I'm building a whole career around it so anyways all right everyone I am gonna get on my bike and go to my zoom I'm doing my zoom class here from Mexico City and um, then I'm gonna do some bike riding and then get on back to the where do I live? Oh, I live in San Miguel de Allende. <laughs> totally grateful to be living in San Miguel, but honestly, I'd rather be living here. This is much more my cup of coffee, as they say, right? So uh, I'm going to have to work on that. I'm going to spend some time in San Miguel and see what that's all about <laughs> but honestly I'll probably come back to the next anyways you don't need to hear all this you've got things to do you've got lines to practice and you've got stories to tell so I'm gonna leave you here on this note um, with my ahalote with my trilogy right the trilogy is an important um, trilogy <laughs> and reminder go easy on yourself go easy on others and keep on drawing right the trilogy well you know what I mean right so go easy on, on yourself friends and have a great Monday it's Earth Day oh my god this is a big day for me this was the day I got married this was the day I went I was institutionalized where I went back when I was a young woman and out of my mind I was literally hospitalized on this day but it was like a rebirth right and being I met a man and we got married two weeks later on this day so um, and there's been a few other things that happened on April 22nd in addition to it being Earth Day right so uh, big day for me personally and uh, I'm gonna go easy on myself and easy on others keep drawing keep telling your stories I'll talk to y'all later bye